Broke Dad Builds here. Another desk review discussion about LS tuning and what you can use to tune your LS for cheap. Like I had in a short, there's HP tuners. You know, you could use that if you want to spend three, four hundred dollars and then also buy the additional credits, you know, to tune your one PCM or two PCMs or your buddies or whatever. It, it adds up really quick. The only you know, benefit of HP tuners is that it has the live data view where you can view live stream data, um, you know, while the engine's running. Um, and it's a pretty interface. Um, to kind of make it a little bit easier to navigate. But if you want to learn how to tune something and really know how things work, then you can go the free option with PCM Hammer and Universal Patcher and Tuner Pro. Those are great. Those work really well for pretty much any basic, you know, type of tune that you want to do. If you want to remove vats or you want to you know, adjust your, uh, your, your, your uh, timing table because you got, you know, a big fat cam in it or you got some bigger injectors. Um, you can do all that stuff. You can even change the shift points in your transmission for your trans if you want to, uh, you know, tweak those a bit, which usually you don't have to do much with shift timing. You know, unless unless you want to play around with it, make it shift nice and firm, you have the option to take away or to disable the torque, uh, torque management stuff. Um, anyways, we'll get into it. We'll go over Universal Patcher. That's what I use mostly. I use Tuner Pro too for certain things, um, but we'll go over Universal Patcher and just basic high level of how to remove disable vats and how to look at other things like your injector uh, tables um, as well as your MAF table. Because if you have a bigger cam in and you got other stuff done that changes the amount of air that the engine takes in, your MAF table is gonna have to be updated a little bit to capture that change or your um, air field ratio is gonna be off and you'll end up being uh, too lean. And you don't want that. Lean is bad. You want to be a little rich. You want to be fat. Fat on the fuel. Because if you're not running a little rich, you have the risk of detonation. And that is going to destroy your engine. If you don't want it. So, let's look at it together. Shall we? Alright, hey. So, talking about Universal Patcher. Let's dig into it a little bit. You're going to find Universal Patcher or the website. You can download uh, the latest version, which this one's the latest one. And they added this new little pop-up window where you can select the different options for the tool. But if you're wanting to program your LS PCM, you want to remove VATS, adjust your math table, your timing table, you know, uh, fuel injector um, parameters, any, any of that stuff. You can use Universal Patcher um, to do that. You can also use Tuner Pro. Um, for me, Universal Patcher seems to work a little bit better um, because if you use Tuner Pro with certain things, um, you'll end up getting um, a checksum error for certain things, and then you have to go in and basically fix it, fix it before you can... Uh, reprogram the, the PCM. Anyways, Universal Patcher. It's free. And when you download it, you'll have to extract it on your desktop and then you can run it. Um, you want to select Advanced and then you go to Tuner. And when you pop up, uh, select Tuner, it'll give you a, another window. It looks like this. And if you don't have a bin file already and you want to read your PCM, you click on read write PCM and what that does is it pulls up PCM Hammer and if you're doing this on a laptop and you know and you have the OBD link um, USB uh, data link connector 
Um, you can connect the OBD, uh, OBD Link SX connector to your OBD2 port and uh, it should pop up here on the device um, for that type of uh, adapter though for the OBD um, link connector you'll have to have the the um, um, software installed for it um, but it'll pop up it'll show the device and then when it's connected to the OBD2 port and you have your um, ignition on PCM powered up make sure you have um, good battery voltage because you don't want the battery voltage uh, for the vehicle to drop down below 12 volts right and really you don't want it to go below like 11 and a half volts 11 volts something like that because then you'll start having issues with the read um, and it can cause issues communicating to the PCM because it needs at least 12 volts um, so make sure you you have enough uh, adequate battery static charge to where when you turn it on uh, it doesn't drop down um, so when you're connected to the um, to the OBD2 port and the ignitions on PCMs powered up um, you're going to click click on uh, read properties because that'll just read the PCM and then from there there's options to where you can read the entire PCM, and that what that does is it reads every single parameter, every every everything on the PCM, and it'll save it as a bin file. Um, and then when you have that read, you can click save, save as, and then make sure you name it something, you know, LS 5.3, and then whatever the o operating system is, which will be listed in the details, um, and you'd say like stock stock tune uh, and then when you have that been saved if you want to go in and remove that you go in here click open bin find your bin and then you select that to open your bin file and once it's opened you can go in and see all the options right so for VAT, um, for VATs to be able to disable the security system you're going to go into this little folder right here expand it and then under vehicle system you'll expand this one and then you'll see theft and with theft you're gonna you can click on the folder or you can click on the VTD configuration and then um, under this parameter it'll default to zero um, at least for this bin it's default to zero you're gonna go and click none and then when you change that parameter it'll ask you if you want to apply modifications you click yes um, and then from there that'll at least give you the, uh, the ability to start your engine um, without worrying about VATs. Um, so then after you change that, if there's anything else that you need to change, like let's say you want to go in and disable a couple diagnostic trouble codes, um, you can just go into the search and the filter and type DTC. And then you'll see the DTC, DTC enabled, mill enabled. So if you just change, click on one, you can go in and let's say, uh, let's say you got a, a, a fat cam in that thing and it's gonna chop like crazy, right? That's gonna cause a, a, a P0300 to, to trigger. Um, so you wanna disable the P0300, um, which it's right here. So it's either enabled or disabled. So you'll just click, make sure that mill enabled is uh, cleared away, that check mark's cleared. And then for the DTC enable parameter, you can click on no mill store DTC or not reported. Um, so you wanna disable that. 
And then if there's any other thing that you have, let's say you have a, you know, it's, this LS swap is going into um, an older vehicle that doesn't have emissions, uh, that doesn't have to be emissions uh, tested. You can remove all the emissions related stuff like EVAP control, can disable that, um, you can change that to not reported and, and so on and so forth. It's just for any DTCs that um, you want to disable. Um, so after you do that, it'll ask you to apply modifications. Yes. And then anything that you change on this one, it'll be updated on this one as well. So if we go to the second uh, table right here, that P0300 right here, it followed the changes that we made on the other table. Um, all right, and then anything else that you wanna do, let's say if you have, um, airflow, so if you start getting into uh, mass airflow tuning, um, you'll have to be mindful for this. So if you have a bigger cam, that's gonna change your uh, amount of air that's going to be coming into the engine, right? Depending on, you know, the, the duration and all that. So you'll have to monitor your, um, your airflow. You can do a log, but before you do any changes, you want to make sure that once you get the engine started, if you got like an aftermarket cam, like a bigger cam in, or let's say different heads along with a different cam and, and you know, things like that, right? You want to make sure you're going to log it. Um, so you do have the option to log with this. So you can go in and go to logger and that will pop up a new window. So if I was connected to my laptop and that was connected to the car, um, to the PCM, you'd be able to connect um, and then you can start a log and then save that log to your desktop or you know to the computer and then you can review it and see um, everything that's going on. Um, you have different settings to make sure that you have your um, specific port for the, the USB uh, data link connectors that connected to. Um, as far as profile, it goes into, you know, just basically the, the parameters for the, uh, the measures for each one. Uh, and there's a couple other things that I have not messed around with yet. I'm still kind of learning myself, but for the most part, you can go in and you can do do a log. You can you can save your log, um, and then you can review all the all the parameters um, to see you know what kind of adjustments you need to make um, for the tune. We'll close that, and then you can go in and you can you know do a little bit of tweaking to your mass airflow. Um, changing the grams per second, um, which for mine, I had to do, I think a 10% increase for my stage two cam with, um, 243 heads on my LQ4, uh, that's board 30 over, but result, results may vary, you know, depending on what kind of flavor you got going on with your engine. So um, this is just a quick, quick overview. Um, and then also, if you wanted to go into your fueling tables, um, you also have things that you can do like power enrichment, um, as well as if you have to change your injector tables. Um, so if you're using different injectors, you have to keep in mind that a lot of different tables have to be changed uh, for your injectors, uh, like your pulse width tables will change slightly. Um, your injector offset table will change, um, which I'll go into a different video some other time going into where you can find that information. So if you get different injectors, you know, where you can find, um, uh, flow tables, um, to use for, uh, retuning your LS engine. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff, lots of stuff, um, more to come. 
I don't want to make this too long of a video because we can get into the weeds. All right, so that's it. We did a quick overview of Universal Patcher. Just high level stuff. I'll go into more detail in another video sometime about uh, where you can find the fuel injector tables, um, how you go about changing the uh, parameters for fuel injectors. So if you have bigger injectors, you wanna make sure that you adjust all your tables accordingly, um, as well as you know doing those little tweaks to your mass airflow um, and you know any other little thing. Well, like electric fans, that's another one because you can actually not mess up your electric fans, but it can be a bear sometimes trying to set those temperatures right for the trigger event for, you know, when you want your low fan and high fan to come on and off. So we'll look at that next time. But thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share it with your friends. I'm trying to grow this channel somehow. You know, anyways, take care. See you next time.